Hey guys, just wanted to let you know that I finally passed my Linux Plus certification today. I've been studying for it for about a month and actually exactly a month minus about four days. So I studied for two weeks and I took the Linux Plus Part 1. I passed that one. Then I studied another two weeks and I passed the Part 2. Now my video before this you can see the study materials I used and it says part two in that video but it was also for part one the same um, the same study materials I can remember just a couple questions that were a little tougher or that I hadn't studied just so you get some idea um, I'd say the part two was about about the same hardness as part one could have been a tiny bit easier because there were just less options and commands to memorize um, the part one was just so many basics, so much to take in at once, and your brain can only absorb so much information. So one question that was tricky, I hadn't really studied it, I didn't expect it, it is what is the lowest unprivileged TCP port? I didn't know. I just guessed a thousand. I totally guessed. And I did Google it afterwards, of course, and it turns out 1024. 1024 is the lowest unprivileged port. That means ports 1023 and below are all privileged, system, reserved for different things like that. Another one I didn't actually get, I, I'm still not sure about, is when you're enabling X11 forwarding on a machine, when you enable it, it's going to automatically populate a certain environment variable. I just did not know that. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't think about if you turn on your X11, enable X11 forwarding, maybe in your in your x11.conf, in your conf file, you're going to maybe, um, you have an option that's called X11 forwarding, turn it to yes, but there's some variable that gets populated in your environment when you do that. That was another tricky one. I couldn't really guess. Look at this beautiful rain. An easier one was uh, pick three out of five commands that are going to allow you to change the expirations on passwords and stuff like that. Two of them are easier. You got the change command, C-H-A-G-E. That's to change age. And you had the user mod command for user modification. That's another way to change your password minimum, maximum, timeline, and all that when they have to change it. And I was confused about the last two, but I did get it right. One of the options was passwd. That seems obvious, but there was a command I hadn't used in a while, chattr, change attribute. And I couldn't quite remember if that was for users, but I thought it was for files. I was right. So luckily I chose passwd on that. I said, that's the password command. There has to be a way to adjust the password expirations with that command. So that was right, but I wasn't totally sure on that. The last one was silly. I just couldn't remember it, but it's pretty obvious. What is the configuration file name for the X11 for the X org X11 forwarding um, process application daemon whatever you call it? What is the configuration file for X11 forwarding? And the answer is xorg.conf. It's very simple. I made it a little more complicated. I said like X11 underscore xorg config.conf or some really crazy answer and I had reviewed that dozens and dozens of times it was just silly I just couldn't remember you know you're trying to memorize three or four hundred pages of information for that test in like a 30 minute period my brain can't hold everything so I missed an easy one there unfortunately but bottom line I did pass and I'm now Linux certified as well as my server plus certification I got last month I think I'm going to go to Security Plus next, but this isn't easy. Don't think it's real simple. I've been studying 8 to 10 hours a day, every day, for a month to get this certification. So put in your work, and the results will show for themselves.